As someone who makes things with technology, a lot of what I'm doing is just connecting one piece of technology to another and getting them to talk to each other. When you're talking about web technologies, this is relatively easy. You can use JSON and applications API to get one thing to talk to another, but it takes a little bit of code. If you don't know any code at all, you can use a service like Ift, if this then that, which lets you connect different services together really easily. And I think that it's great for people who want to be able to take control of their technology and use technology to their advantage without needing to code a web server or, or use JavaScript or Python. Now, Getting things to talk to each other isn't always very easy at all. Sometimes there is no API that you can use. And I was faced with a situation where I had an Arduino with, uh, hooked up to eight switches that I wanted to talk to a computer that was running Python. And I was looking at the problem thinking, how do I get these to talk to each other? And in, my, in the past few years in, in understanding the way things talk to each other, I realized that's always a bit challenging for me. Uh, you know, you, you'll figure out a protocol, you'll figure out the way you want the, these things to talk to each other, and then it'll work for a while, but then something will happen that you don't expect. Some information comes in you don't expect, and the protocol doesn't know how to handle it. And so it, it's a difficult thing to do. But in this case where I've got eight switches, I realized that eight switches that could be just turned on or off are a lot like a byte, which has eight bits in them, each bit can be on or off. So I realized I could send the state of eight different switches in a single byte to Python, and that should be pretty robust, I think. So let me walk you through a little bit of how I did it, and um, the code is gonna be in a link in the description below, so you can check it out if you want yourself. The idea is, is that if the switch is off, that means zero. If the switch is on, that means one. Now, I don't really ever work with bits, usually when I'm building things with code, and I even try to avoid working with bytes. I kind of work at this higher level. But working with bits for the first time on this particular project actually ended up being not so bad. And all I really needed to do was iterate through each switch by checking each one, and then after checking each one, if it was on, I would add one and then shift all the bits. So let's say I started with this one. Let's say, and let's say the switch was on and this switch was on. I start with this one. If this switch is on, I add one and then shift the bits. And then so then uh, it'll, it'll do this like that. And this iterates over and over and over again until I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like that. So this represents in binary. This is 129. Uh, this is 100. This represents 128. This represents one. So then this single byte can go from the Arduino right into Python as a single byte. That's a lot of information to come through to get in a single byte, and I think that's pretty cool. In Python, it was actually really easy to figure out which switches are on or not by just comparing bitwise one thing to another. So I took the number 128, which in binary looks like, let's see, did I get that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay. Uh, binary looks like that. this is 128. And I said, do these share any of the same bits that are on? If yes, they do, if these match, then it's true. That means this switch is on. So that's how I managed to get all that information down to one byte and get that into Python and be able to evaluate the state of every switch in Python pretty easily. I've been using it for my thesis project. Uh, this is a mini version of what I'm making. Ultimately, I will have many more switches on there, but this is the route I plan to go so that I can get the information over USB to server to the server. The only other option is to use a Raspberry Pi, which has GPIO and Python built right in. So I'm no electrical engineer, I'm no CS guy, so if you wanna take a look at the code and tell me how I can improve it, please do. It's a GitHub repo, it's down below. Feel free to fork it and have fun with it. And I'm curious to know what you think of this approach. Have a great day and thank you for subscribing, thank you for commenting, thank you for liking, and thank you for sharing. Bye.